I recently made a video where I machined my own spur gears, and one thing a lot of people were interested in was the dividing head which I picked up brand new 5 inch chuck included for a little over 200 US dollars. And if you know how much a dividing head usually goes for, you'll know that this thing has no business being sold for $200. If I wanted to pick up a Vertex brand one, I'd be up for at least six to $700, plus an extra 100 for the five inch chuck, plus extra for a back plate. In fact, if I didn't know any better, this is starting to sound like a bit of a scam. So let's start from the beginning, let me repackage it and unbox it. Well that was a lot heavier than I was expecting. I thought the 4 inch mill vice was heavy, but this thing weighs in at about 2 and a bit times that. I must have skipped over that fact when I bought it. If the box is correct, this is my new dividing head, complete with 5 inch chuck and back plate. The box seemed to make it in one piece, though right below the keep this way up symbol, we have an upside down shipping label. That's reassuring. Not exactly sure what this is, maybe a dog driver for when you turn between centres. Outside jaws for the chuck. A ring to go on the threaded spindle. A chuck key. I'm guessing some T-nuts of some sort. A tailstock with an offset centre, a Morse 2 dead centre, the spindle taper for this is Morse taper 2, two extra dividing plates, a spring loaded pin handle, and of course the dividing head. For what you pay, you do get a decent amount of stuff. Of course looks can be deceiving, but for what it's worth, the first impressions are pretty decent. Everything seems to be decently machined and ground in, there's no big scratches or dents. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but I'm really impressed. If you didn't tell me this thing retails for $200, I probably wouldn't suspect it. In fact if you put this next to a Vertex model, which is more than 2.5 times the price, I'd probably struggle to pick which one was which. With that said, I still want to tear it down and have a look at the components. Plus, if I was going to do any proper machine shop work, I'd still trust a brand name dividing head over this. Plus, instead of gear cutting, I'd probably use a gear hob, though let's not get ahead of ourselves. At the end of the day, this is a hobby channel, and realistically, $700 to $800 for a dividing head is a lot of money, so if I can get away with paying $200 for this, and it cuts decent gears, I'll be pretty happy. Before I tear it down, let's talk about the price. $200 seems to be too good to be true. So I bought this off AliExpress, and I originally paid $130 US for this, and it was on sale at the time, and I knew it was too good to be true, but it was a bit of a gamble, and afterwards they sent me a message asking for more money, so I had to dispute it to get my money back. After that, I bought this one for about 200 US dollars. The store that I bought it from was called Vevor or Vivor, and thankfully they didn't try the same thing. Now with dividing heads, my understanding is they are all loosely based on the brown and sharp design, this one is based off the Brown and Sharp Model 0, hence why it's called a BS0 dividing head. This is the smallest and most inexpensive one I could find, though it does lack a few features. So on this model, you're able to do direct indexing with the 24 hole plate mounted to the spindle. You can also do indirect indexing with the dividing plates and the 40 to 1 worm gear. However, the larger BS2 and 3 models can also connect to the spindle drive so that the dividing head spins as the spindle turns. This allows you to gear hob to form the involute profile. And this is how you'd typically form gears. Though of course there are quite a few other methods. As well as that, this dividing head can't connect to the table lead screw. 
This feature is used to cut helixes and helical gears. I know there certainly are workarounds, but as stock, the only gears you'll be cutting on this one are going to be spur gears and bevel gears. However, these gears can be pretty useful, hence why I bought it. Plus, being able to do simple indexing with the 24-hole pattern is pretty invaluable. So with all that out of the way, I think it's about time that I pull it apart and just check it to make sure that everything all works. The first thing that I actually noticed was that the handle for the spring-loaded pin actually didn't fit on the worm gear. The slot is a little bit oversized and it caused a lot of backlash. It's also way too thin and the pin wouldn't properly seat. I'm not sure what the issue is. The part is die cast, so it should be dimensionally accurate. I'm not sure if they just put in the wrong one, but it needs to be replaced. Not a huge issue though, I was able to quickly remake it from some aluminium. And the replacement is a much better fit. The handle fits well and there's very little backlash. To remove the sector arms and dividing plate, you'll need to remove the flat spring which holds the sector arms in place. And I'll need to bend it a little bit because it's way more powerful than it should be and I actually needed some pliers to actually pull it off. Taking a quick look at the dividing plates, they seem to be pretty well made. It's almost certainly done on a CNC to get the pattern spot on. The holes certainly need a deburr, though I'm pretty happy with the quality of them. Holding the worm gear in place is this housing. The other side that fits into the dividing head is eccentric, and the idea is that you use this to reduce the backlash by changing the meshing of the worm gear. It works really well, though it's a little bit touch and go, but it's really necessary to do as you don't want backlash when cutting gears. It might take one or two minutes to get the correct amount of meshing, though if you add too much and you push the worm gear into the gear, it tends to seize up and you will notice that. It should also be noted that when the worm gear is engaged, you can only directly index. To use the whole pattern, simply disengage the worm gear by rotating the housing anti-clockwise. And of course we can use the pin to select the hole and then lock the spindle. And I don't know how well you can see it, but in there is a bronze gear wheel. I wouldn't mind taking this apart and seeing how well it's made. As well as dividing, the dividing head also allows the work to be tilted, hence the marked angles on the side. To tilt it, all you have to do is undo these two bolts, which loosen these two brass clamps, and you're able to tilt it. And to be completely honest, these are some very roughly machined parts. So I gave them a very quick facing in the lathe, and it really cleaned them up. And you can also see how the head is able to now completely tilt, though you don't need to completely remove the clamps to tilt it. And before you move the head, I'd recommend that you give the dovetails a small oiling. It's a decently machined surface, but you wouldn't want to damage it. Now in its vertical position, even this small model is about 26 centimeters tall. So if you are thinking about doing any vertical dividing, I'd recommend a tall milling machine with lots of Z travel, or even better, just use a rotary table. I'm also a bit skeptical of the protractor. That marked reference is just very poorly done, and I probably wouldn't trust it. If I need to set the angle correctly, what I'd do is clamp in some silver steel, and I'd indicate it with a dial indicator in the mill. At this point, I'd really like to remove the head so I can clean the dovetails. However, to do that, I do need to remove the chuck and backplate. And here's where the problems start. I can't remove the chuck because the chuck is bolted to a backplate and the backplate is so tightly torqued on to the spindle threads that I actually can't remove it. I tried quite a few methods to loosen it, but nothing worked. And I'm really afraid of damaging that bronze worm gear and the spindle lock wasn't holding it all that tightly. So I guess that's staying on for the moment. I then tried to remove the chuck from the back plate, but the bolt socket is covered by the 24 hole dividing plate. As a result, I can't get a hex head in to remove those cap head screws. Now I was going to remove the back and see if I could tap out the shaft. It's held in by a pair of tapered roller bearings. 
but I can't actually remove the bearings unless I remove a cover which is held in by screws that is located directly behind the chuck which I can't remove. I'm guessing that the only way to remove it would be to use a press to actually press out the shaft. I probably could do it with a hammer, though I do want to be pretty careful around this tool, so what I might do is get a friend with a press to remove it for me. Currently though, it's not a huge issue for me, the dividing head works really well, so it's not a top priority. Quickly, let's talk about the tailstock. It's a bit of a pain to set up, having two adjustment bolts to work on, but it seems to work really well. It's nicely machined, with a really good action. With that said, only what needs to be machined gets machined. The base is still a very rough sand casting, though it doesn't affect the performance of the tailstock. I do apologise that I wasn't able to pull it apart. I do hope it was enough information for you though. Overall, I've been very happy with the dividing head. I've made quite a few things on it, and it seems to be decently accurate. Apart from the risk of getting scammed, for $200, chuck included, it's really hard to pass it up, at least for a hobby user. Of course for a pro, skip this and opt for a universal dividing head. As a final note, I do have an upgrade plan for this in the future. Whilst I can do most common gears using the dividing plates, there are some divisions which I simply can't do. For example, a 101 tooth division. To get 101 divisions, I'd probably have to attach a stepper motor and maybe an Arduino to get those divisions. But that's an idea for another day. If you have any other suggestions on getting the chuck off, I'd really like to hear them. If not, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.